Hey friends, welcome back. As you can see, we are here with our Aquarius Lindsay. You probably recognize her face because she's popped up a few times, but if you think way back to March, Lindsay and I did a Facebook Live where we fed Myrtle, our green sea turtle. Um, but today Lindsay's here to tell us about the room that we're standing in because this is a room that we've been in quite a few times, but we realized we have never given you guys a proper introduction to this room. This is called the Splash Room for reasons that I'm sure we'll get into in a minute. But first, maybe we'll start out with, Lindsay, where is this room and where are we, where are we standing? <laughs> so as you mentioned, we are in our splash room. And if you're roaming around behind the scenes of the aquarium, I'd say it's located next to maybe the most important room, which is our kitchen. Uh, <laughs> but for us on the dive team, this room I'd say is equally important because this is where we keep a lot of our gear. And this room actually can transform into a lot of different um, scenarios and become a lot of different things for us, uh, which is really great. And we can discuss it as we give you guys a tour. Awesome. So before we get into all of the goodies hanging on the walls all around this room, can you tell us a little bit about what exactly our dive team used this room for? Sure. So the divers themselves, once we suit up um, in our office area, will come in here and assemble all of our gear. So you'll notice there's a couple dive um, gear setups already. We already had our morning dive this morning. Cool. Um, and you might notice that our dive gear looks a little bit different than what you might see if you're recreationally scuba diving out in the ocean. Um, once staff, volunteers, interns, any diving personnel completes 30 dives with a normal uh, buoyancy compensator, they get to upgrade and graduate uh, to a backplate and harness, which is a little sleeker, keeps you a little bit more trim in the tank, less likely to bump into any of the coral or disrupt us while we're swimming around. Feels important. It is very important. <laughs> and another key feature in this room, uh, maybe the splash in the splash room, is these shower heads. Um, although the giant ocean tank is a nice 74 degrees, that does get a little cold once you're diving all day long. So divers will certainly take the opportunity to uh, warm up with some hot water from our shower heads too. Perfect. All right, let's get into the meat. <laughs> let's turn into all of the stuff that's going on. We're to be fair, we're not going to show you every single thing in the splash room because that would be a much longer video than anyone would want to watch, including myself. But I think Lindsay's going to give us the highlights tour. So Lindsay, what would you like to start with first? So I already touched upon the dive gear a little bit. Um, we have 12 tanks usually set up throughout the day and divers will continuously flop out their gear or switch out regs um, depending on who's diving. Um, so I'll move up here to a bunch of our nets. All nets are not created equal. <laughs> uh, so really we have different sized nets to help us collect any animals that we might need to look at or potentially put into a holding barrel if they need a little time out from the other animals in the tank. And so we have rubber nets which range in sizes uh, both small and large on that wall over there. And then we have these vinyl nets which kind of act like small um, aquariums almost. Fish sometimes having a, have a hard time seeing the vinyl. And then also um, it provides them with a decent amount of space to swim around with if we have to quickly move them into a holding space. Cool. Yeah. So we'll just let Michelle pan over here real quick so you can get an appreciation for the, the big rubber net. So there you go. There's some scale for you to check that <laughs> out. <laughs> so catching fish, really important stuff that we occasionally have to do here. This is not your home aquarium net. This is the big boy version. The big boy version, yes. Awesome. What else do we have in here, Lindsay? Uh, well, I did mention this room can transform to fit any of our needs. And so any, a reason that we might be catching an animal might be because they have an exam with our vets. And so uh, when that happens, we turn this room into a little doctor's office, I'd like to say. We have a bunch of different um, bins that we store under here as well. There are some bigger ones down the hall that have wheels and all the bells and whistles on them. <laughs> um, but we'll set those up for our vets to come in and get a look at our animals. So this room really does serve a lot of different purposes for us. Um, and we'll also store a bunch of other gear, which you might see on the walls hanging over here. We have some of our targets. Uh, we do a fair amount of target training with our animals. I believe uh, our sharks have been highlighted before with their target training with their hammock and their orange ball here. Absolutely. Um, but it's not just predators that we target train in the giant ocean tank. Uh, we have these odd looking boxes. We refer to them as parking spaces. <laughs> and they're actually for our box fish, file fish, and some of our smaller uh, balloon fish, which are small puffer fish. Um, and these animals aren't predators, but they're a little slower of swimmers. Um, so in order for them to get a fair shot of getting food and not get outcompeted by maybe our more aggressive eaters, uh, we've trained them to come into these parking spaces. It started out with this red target and we've kept the red associated down here and then this box is clear so they're able to see through it. 
and they'll actually swim on in there and eat their fill um, every afternoon when we feed them. So there you go. Not just the enthusiastic eaters, but also the shy eaters get a little bit of target feeding in the giant ocean tank. Now, Lindsay, you mentioned our shark target feeding, and I think maybe on the wall behind me is something associated with that. Could you maybe explain um, what's going on with this guy? And I'll move out of your way so sure that you can show thing. our viewers. So like I said, we um, highlighted our sharks a while ago, so I definitely recommend checking that video out to see them in action. <laughs> um, but our sharks are very well target trained to associate um, this orange ball along with this target, which I'll take down in just a minute with feeding time. Um, and it took a lot of hard work to get them comfortable and you know excited to swim through. But basically we are able to hang this nice hammock off the side of a platform and they will swim on through as if it's a drive through window and they're ready to get their happy meal. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Now, um, so this is kind of the area that you guys get ready in, mm -hmm. but how do you get out of the splash room and onto the dive platform? Can we maybe show our viewers how, how you guys get out of here? Yeah, absolutely. So you're in the mindset of a diver about to head into the tank. You've come in, maybe, you know, filled up your wetsuit with a little bit of hot water, put on all of your gear, and then we're gonna head out this door And now if you're on the outside, you might see one of these no exit staff only, but you guys are with me, so it's okay. <laughs> and then we'll head on down here. And you'll be ready for your dive in the giant ocean tank. Well, thank you so much, Lindsay, for giving us the official tour of the splash room. So now you guys know when we reference that splash room or when you see our dive staff hard at work in that space, you'll know exactly what's going on and some of the cool tools of the trade from our giant ocean tank staff. If you have questions about anything you saw today, want to learn more about the types of nets or our target training tools, put them in the comments. We'll answer those questions for you and we hope to see you again soon. Thanks, friends.